Oh yeah, that's a Demon 170. That's Jay Leno's Demon 170. I'm going to check the bin on this and see if it was really a true 2003 Mustang Mach 1 that was converted to an electric car. We'll take a look at Matt's 2004 40th anniversary Mustang GT. That's a total track car and show car. I got to meet him and his dad, so pretty cool. Let's start this video out at the beginning. I got tickets to go to SEMA. And Novsight, which sent me the LED headlights and fog lights for the GT, which I actually love and I use every day, sent me some passes. They sent one for me and my wife to go enjoy the SEMA show. And so that was very nice of them. They uh, did that for us and said, you can come check out the show and just enjoy and stop by the booth and say hello. And so in the last couple of weeks, I've been waiting to go to the show. I've been pretty excited, been just doing my own thing, hanging out with my brother, cruising in our Terminator Cobras, going out and enjoying the nice morning. This time of year is actually pretty special to us. And uh, this was actually a pretty cool time as well because I went to SEMA several years ago with my friend, but only to go help him pick up a lighting display for a different company that he was selling lights from, like light bars and stuff. And so this time of year is always fun, and it reminds me of going down there, and now I actually get to go down and enjoy the show. So just having fun and enjoying this time of the year as well. Beautiful day, beautiful time of year. It's just fantastic. And so the first order of business to get this road trip going was to swap the wheels out of the Silver GT. I have never taken it to Vegas, and I wanted to put my Terminator wheels on because they had really good tires on them. Those are the satin polished wheels, not the chrome ones. And uh, these bullet wheels are in great shape, and the tires are pretty good, but there's a little bit of baldness starting on the insides, which is fine, but... I just felt like I would be happier knowing that I had brand new tires on the car for the four hours of freeway driving that my wife and I will be doing in the GT. And so I just wanted everything to be good on the trip and make sure that everything went smoothly and that there wasn't any problems or anything. And so I wanted to go ahead and just swap those out. Around town, they're just fine. Driving to work and back, no problem. But on the freeway, it's just something I don't want to have a problem with. You know, I bought a Lexus IS300, and those cars are factory cambered, uh, where the insides wear faster than the outsides, uh, the tires. And uh, I had driven it five hours with my wife on a trip, and when we got to our destination, I looked under the car. We just bought the car, and I looked under and said, oh, wow, the insides are bald. And so um, we went real slow on the way home and took it easy, but we still had a tire blowout on us from that. So, you know, I see people driving around with cords showing all the time. And I know this is like, you know, to some people not a big deal, but to me, safety's the number one priority. And if I have the wheels just sitting there, why don't I just put them on? Right? It really doesn't take very long. And I've been wanting to see what the GT looks like with those Terminator Cobra wheels on. I thought it would look all right. I've seen, obviously, several GTs over the years with them on there, but just thought it'd be kind of fun to have them on here. Now, I really love the bullet wheels on this car, and I thought about just going down there with the bullet wheels on it and risking everything working out fine just so that I can enjoy having the car look the way I like it to look. You know, the Cobra wheels are cool, and they look really good on the car, but they just look off to me because it's not a Terminator Cobra. So uh, even the center caps, I left the SVT ones in there because the uh, pony caps would fit in there. And I've seen people who have Terminator Cobra wheels with the pony caps in them on their GTs, and they just still don't look right. So I just wanted to do this real quick, swap these on, leave the SVT center caps on there, probably swap them back when I get home, but I just wanted to do this and enjoy cruising with nice tires the whole way down. So I'll show you what this tire looks like on the inside. Uh, it doesn't look uh, too bad, but on this side you can see the balding starting to happen. It's just that inner... And I did have the uh, car aligned. We did this at the college with my friend who runs a shop up there. And 
everything was in spec. It's just the insides were already starting to wear a little bit. And I have several sets of bullet wheels and some tires are almost new and some aren't. And so it's just a matter of wearing them out. And, <laughs> you know, you could, uh, drive for years on the different wheels and tires I have just sitting around. So I don't really want to buy new ones just for that. But this is a good idea. And I had just taken these Cobra wheels off of my red 10th anniversary Cobra and put the 10th anniversary wheels back on it. All right, so we're about to lower this side down and go ahead and put in the comments whether you think these wheels look good on the car or whether you think they belong on the car. I think that's a difference. I think they look good on the car. They remind me of my friend Silver Terminator here in town. But do they belong on the car? Uh, let me know what you think. They do look good. But I did go down to my brother's house and put a little more air in the tires. They were pretty good. They had just come off my other car, so they weren't super low. But I just wanted to make sure they had the same amount in all tires. And, you know, it looked pretty good. So very nice set of wheels, and I like how they shine. So... Drove the car to work, and uh, I thought it looked pretty good in the parking lot there in the early hours. I like the way that these machined wheels shine. They hit the light differently, and they they kind of, like, they shine as you walk by them. They kind of, you know, twist shine. It's kind of cool. So just had a few pictures of them here. And uh, I actually had a set of the 01 Cobra wheels on my other silver GT, and they were actually the premium GT wheels, but they were the same as the 2001 Cobra wheels, just with the pony center caps in them. And so this was kind of cool because it reminded me of that. And it was an 03 Silver GT. This is an 04 Silver GT, basically the same car, both automatic. Uh, but anyway, I'll have a little comparison picture here. But anyway, car looked good. It's nice to drive around on new tires. I actually got some pictures, which I'll show you here in a second, of the silver 03 with the 01 Cobra wheels versus this silver 04 with the 03 Cobra wheels on it. And I put it on my Instagram and asked people what they preferred. And surprisingly, a lot of people said they wanted these Terminator wheels more than the 01 Cobra wheel. I mean, the 03 Cobra wheels are more iconic, but... Um, a lot of people were just so interested in those. So here's my silver 03 with the 01 Cobra wheels. And here's my silver 04 with the 03 Cobra wheels. So a little bit of a difference. They almost look identical in the pictures. And uh, the ones on the, uh, the bottom here, the 01 Cobra wheels, were actually the polished ones. So they looked really good. Instead of the machined ones, they were a little bit brighter, more like chrome. So there's a little difference there. But... Very cool wheels. I like them both. And so time to leave work and go home and get ready. I actually had the next day off, so I was going to go get a full night's rest so I can enjoy going to SEMA early in the morning the next day, beat the traffic. There's been a lot of traffic recently between here and Vegas, and it's slowed down a lot. So car looked great in the driveway. And uh, there were a couple things I wanted to do. I got the tires on there and everything, the wheels. I wanted to check the oil and the coolant and everything. I always clean the running pony on top here. Every time I open the hood, I've made a habit of it. But it's fun to look under this engine bay and see that yellow Terminator Cobra front end on here that's been welded in and everything. That was a big project if you've followed along with this car. And that's going to be a lot of enjoyment for me to take this car down to Vegas on four hours of driving of a road trip because this car has really come a long way. When I bought it, I was going to use it for parts and now I get to enjoy it as an awesome you know, car. I've already put 10,000 miles on it and just loved it. So I finished that all up and then went out and enjoyed the day again with my brother and his Cobra. And just, man, it's so perfect out here. This is perfect time to go down to SEMA. And it reminds me a lot of that. I'll show you a little bit about uh, where I was when we pass it. But it reminds me of when I went with my friend to SEMA. Uh, so it's just, it's fun to be here with the cars. This is where I like to be. And these are the cars I enjoy the most. So going to SEMA will be fun. But anyway, early morning, let's get going. Time to go. The GT's looking good. And uh, 
the uh, everything's good topped it off full tank of gas check the oil new tires and new windshield cruising down the road and over here is where i used to be with my friend when uh, i would be on the other side of that wall and so here's a little flashback from the other side of that wall we were just looking at I used to hang out here and see all these cars going down the freeway. That's where we're headed right now, the GT. And I would watch them all going towards Vegas and think, man, it's so fun. I want to go down there to the SEMA show. I want to go down there to the racetrack where I always go do the night racing with the bullet. And so when I was on this side of the wall, we would be uh, detailing and washing customers' cars with my friend who owns the mobile detail business. And I would always walk up to the wall and look and see all the cars going by and think, man, I wanna go have some fun. So here we are today cruising and uh, headed down. I followed this EcoBoost Mustang basically the whole way. It was kind of fun just to follow them and enjoy the view of another Mustang ahead. And we just kept pace with each other, and uh, it, it was really fun. We're going through the gorge here. This is one of the places I talk about my other videos that's just very beautiful. A lot of my friends just go for a drive on this section of Interstate 15 just for the drive because it's so fun. And there's the uh, big American flag at the truck stop. This is where I uh, stopped and uh, took my yellow GT on a trip, if you saw that recently. And uh, it was kind of a celebration for getting that car running. It was pretty cool. That GT had come a very long way. So that's a cool story in itself. So lots of memories driving through here. But keeping pace with that Ruby Red EcoBoost was fun because this Ruby Red GT350 that my friend has, I've made a lot of videos on it and getting it repainted in a lot of spots and how beautiful it looks now. It gives you a big appreciation to see a beautiful ruby red Mustang like this going down the road. And this car looks very, very nice. And I've just dealt a lot with ruby red lately. So we just kept pace going through here. This is the Nevada desert. It's really beautiful. It's a, a great time of year again. And uh, another reason why it's very important to me is because this was the same time of year I came home from South America when I was there for two years for a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so I actually flew into Vegas and my parents picked me up at the airport with my twin brother. We both returned the same day, and it was this exact same time of year. So Vegas is very special to me for that reason. It's when I came back to freedom, to this country I love so much after being gone for two years. Check out that blue top, blue side scoop SN95 GT. It took us about half an hour to find parking. It was $50 to park in this parking lot. We found a GT convertible looks like it's an 01 to 03 judging by the hood scoop it doesn't have the right side scoops but it does have the spoiler of an 01 to 04 so I'm guessing it's an 01 to 03 that side scoops correct on this side so uh, must have just lost one somewhere so I parked next to them I thought that was pretty fun it looked like a nice car so here we are approaching SEMA, going inside and seeing stuff. First stop was VMP, and so I saw their YouTube channel of them here uh, the night before, so I thought that was fun. There's the new lid for the GT500 style uh, setup, and it has the cutaway. There's the Odin supercharger next to it with the cutaway. You can see the intercooler bricks in here on the uh, Odin, so that's kind of cool to see. And uh, they were just getting started, so I said hi to Justin, and uh, I should have stayed a little bit uh, longer, but uh, you know I didn't want to bother him and stuff. But this is a cool display they had of the pulley system, and there's the top supercharger pulley and their idlers and stuff on the timing cup. Looks like they have a balancer on the bottom there too and stuff. They had the ice tank and everything too, so that's kind of cool to see them bring a display out there. That was fun to go and check out. And now this next uh, car was a 03 Mach 1 that was converted to an electric vehicle. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was walk up. I was hoping I could and, and look at the VIN number and look for that R in the VIN number. So there it is. This is a true Mach 1 Mustang, Oxford White. 
and it has a full conversion here with Tremec. And I was talking to the Tremec associate, and he said they acquired a company that's been around for several years doing this, and they're working together to get ahead of the curve and just make something unique. And so I was going to show this. I thought it was cool. The Ford uh, fuse box was still in the engine bay, I guess, to control everything else. But uh, this was very interesting to see. And, you know, I actually posted a quick uh, short on YouTube about this, and I got a lot of mixed emotions. Some people hate it, some don't. I wanted to make sure it was a real Mach 1, so there's the R in the VIN, and there's the actual gauges with the red line at 6800, so uh, it used to be a manual Mach 1 with a interior upgrade package, and so the numbers of that car are 724 of the white Mach 1s in 03, that were interior upgrade package. And it's even more rare of one of 586 Mach 1s that were Oxford White and 03 that were manual transmission. So a uh, pretty neat car, pretty rare car too, actually. And it's been converted. And now I assume that this car had a blown up engine. And so they went ahead and just did this with it. You know, some people were upset and said if they pulled the four valve, that sounds so good out of that car to make it electric. It's like an abomination. You know, I heard a lot of negative comments about that. And uh, I don't know, it's pretty neat to see the Mach 1 hood there. And this car has got to be really fast. And so pretty cool to see Tremec working with it too. So I have mixed emotions about it. It is a Mach 1 and it did sound fantastic. My favorite sounding engines in the world are the 4.6 liters. So, um, but you know, this is innovation and, you know, uh, this would outrun a stock Mach 1. So, you know, if it's about the power, then it's about the power. You know, some people say, well, make it faster. And some people say they hate electric. And, you know, I totally understand that. So that's just something that we're going to have to deal with as time goes on. But this is the early um, start of uh, seeing what the future holds for electric vehicles. So I just wanted to show the interior here a little bit and show this Mach 1 and just kind of see it as what it was. It's kind of a cool car. Had airbag delete on the passenger side, had a cage in it and stuff. And so very interesting. Now, I have no idea what all this stuff is. I'm going to be the first one to admit that. And it was so funny to look under there and see how the only thing between that battery and the drivetrain were a couple cables. There's like no crankshaft that connects to a transmission. So weird to see that right there with nothing between the two power units. The tubular K member under there too. So very, very interesting. It did have a couple tanks in there that looked like they were to cool something. So thought that looked interesting too. Um, but we'll go outside in a minute and you'll see why most people hate this. And it's because of the sound the V8 puts out that we all love. So here's a cool 67 or 68, I believe, Mustang Fastback. A lot of beautiful custom cars here. And these cars are all something that you could look at for a very long time and spend a, a lot of time with each of these cars. And uh, there's so much detail and love and hard work put into these. And so, you know, we'll look through some of these cars here in the show. Worldwide Trans Am was there with their new 70s Chevelle style cars. These, as far as I know, are built off of the Camaro platform. And they did Trans Ams for a very long time, and now they're doing Chevelles. I thought the, I mean, it looks kind of goofy. It just, you know, the whole car just kind of looks different. But if you take it for what it is and say this is something interesting, and it's supposed to look like a Chevelle, but not try to be a Chevelle without you knowing it. Like, it, it's not like they're trying to pull one over on you and make you think it's actually a 70 Chevelle, but it just has the styling of a 70 Chevelle. I think that's the way to look at it. So, obviously, these were both uh, beautiful cars, you know, beautiful um, convertibles, both of them were, and so... Interesting to see that. I used to watch that show all the time on TV, so kind of cool to see. And just so many beautiful cars. Here is a uh, 68, I believe, Camaro. And uh, it had a lot done to it. Beautiful job. I believe that was a Whipple supercharger on top. 
And uh, there are so many cars there that are just fantastic. Here's another Fastback Mustang. This looks really good. If you look at those LED lights, they're uh, very interesting if you actually look closely at them. And beautiful paint job. Has, you know, beautiful interior. I looked at that stick shift there and I thought <laughs> it looked like the automatic for a Coyote. And I believe that's what it was. It's hard to tell when they have these valve covers and stuff on here. It's all custom. But, you know, 785 horse supercharged. So um, I would assume that that's a Coyote engine in there. Here's a beautiful uh, Cuda at the Meguiar's display. And all these cars are just fantastic. The paint job is beautiful, of course. And these wheels are incredible. And so... You know, this car, I like the interior because it was, like, really clean, like, plastic, I want to say. And so, I mean, it had some stitching and some stuff in there. But people always dog on, you know, my generation Mustang for having plastic interiors. But that was a really nice plastic interior. And it looked very smooth. And these cars just look really good. You know, beautiful engine in here with stacks on the top. And uh, not sure if it's just hiding a newer fuel-injected supercharged engine. Here's the Pro Chargers. This was kind of cool to see. Here's a Coyote. That's a new Coyote. That's a, a new 2024. And it's a 5.0 with two inlets. And the, the Pro Charger over here. So very interesting to see how they're going about the dual intake system. So, wow, like I don't think I even realized that was a new one when I saw it. I saw the Pro Charger, and I didn't really think that it had the two inlets on it. So it's always good to have video and go back and see that. McLeod clutches and flywheels and stuff. We just put a twin disc in my brother's Terminator Cobra. So it was fun to see that. I was explaining to my wife about the hydraulic uh, clutches and how they work and the slave cylinder and stuff. So it's pretty cool to see all that there. Here's a Mustang Coyote. It looked like it was a GT350. You know, it had fenders and everything on it, but it was a Coyote Mustang. Beautiful car. Nice carbon fiber hood. I mean, all these cars have so much to look at, and uh, you could spend a lot of time just looking at all the details. So here's Fast and the Furious uh, Supra. I don't know if this was actually a movie car or not. I think this is a replica and a uh, Skyline, just like the one Paul Walker drove as well. And so I'm not sure if these were replicas or not, like I said, but really cool to see. And there was another Supra here. So here's one. This one had more <clears throat> the blue seats and stuff. And it's looked more like the movie car, but I'm sure it's a very highly replicated car. But when you see it in person, you think, wow, this really is very beautiful, very well done. And it's kind of a fun car because it's so iconic in the movie. So if you want to pause and read through this, I... I tried to go slow enough that hopefully you could pause and read through that. And this was a fantastic, beautiful 70 Challenger 426 Hemi. This was so cool to see. I got to ride around in a 440 six-pack Challenger when I was a kid. My uncle had one. And I was explaining to my wife that this is such a neat car because this was an average car. This was a muscle car that anybody could have back in the 70s. And you would see this parked in a grocery store parking lot. You would see it getting dinged by shopping carts and other people's doors. And you'd see young guys running these down the streets and racing them and taking them to the track and just enjoying them. But now to find one, they're so expensive and so sought after and rare that it's put itself into a whole different category. Now it's a car that is not very attainable for most people. I like the... Um, paint matched fuel door i like the other fuel door better but anyway cool to see here's some kind of carbon fiber looking probably a wrap on this uh this is the tmi booth where they make the seats for tmi like the bullet mustang and mach 1 reproduction and here's some of the 60s mustang um interiors so pretty cool to see that it's a gto i really like uh this generation my friend had one, a red one, six liter, and this has the E4 supercharger on it. So fun to see that under the hood. This would be a pretty fast car. A six liter LS2, I believe, uh, judging by the hood. It has the dual snorkels on the hood. Uh, they had the LS1 in the earlier GTOs, and then they went to the LS2. And so I believe this was an LS2 GTO. Nice set of weld wheels here. 
and uh, you know that's very nice i'm sure that hooks up good here's a bunch of like gt40 style cars i'm pretty sure these were the replicas and i have a little bit of a uh, view of the stand here that we'll look at with the description and stuff there's the gulf blue and orange iconic look so superformance and so that's their car and you can hopefully pause and read that if you'd like to and so kind of cool to see i was showing my wife this and telling her about how it's like the uh, ford vs ferrari movie that's the generation of those uh, gt40s looks like they have corvettes and couple ac cobra style ones and of course everybody loves the daytona coupe and so here's one of these looks really good that's a nice looking car and of course these were all beautiful and very well done very nice show cars so tried to record this a little bit maybe you can read that and see if you can uh, pause it if you would like to and just read through that so pretty cool to see and so here's another you know picture of that and outside, they had like a Eleanor style 60s Mustang Fastback, 67, 68. And this car was pretty neat. It actually had the interior of a new Mustang in here. And so I would assume it also had a Coyote engine in it. So here, you know, I know there's glare on the window, but pretty cool to see the new interior in an old Mustang. And everybody loves the Eleanor Mustang, so, you know, this is pretty cool to see. Basically modeled after that, the GT500, you know, so black. So here is uh, my friend's Mustang GT. It's a 40th anniversary crimson red car that he's converted into a full race car with his dad. And they do the Optima battery series stuff, and... You know, they're very competitive and they've been installing a lot of really neat parts on it recently. I've been watching them over the last several years. It's really cool, like father and son project. There's been a lot of really cool uh, stuff I've seen them do. And they've done so much with this car. They're always working on it, doing neat things, independent rear suspension out of a Cobra, 373 gears. It has a Mach 1 engine, forged internals, supercharged um centrifugal i believe it's a vortex and uh, he was telling me all about the um the oil sump system on it and how cool that is they just did the trunk here so this thing is just really done up and it's a show car and a race car and so that's what's cool about this and uh, it's something that they really go out there and use and it's something they enjoy and I really like that it's a real 40th anniversary GT that's turned into something very special. Now, I did get to meet Evan from, you know, Evan Smith from Revan Evans' YouTube channel. And um, I just turned around there when I was um, talking to Matt about his 40th anniversary GT. And there's Evan standing there. And I said, Evan? Like, I, I was just making sure it was him. And he's like, Yeah. I was like, man, it's so cool to, to meet you. You know, I watch his YouTube channel. And uh, for those of you who don't know, he worked for uh, Mustang Magazines in the past. And he was an editor. And they would test all the new Mustangs. You know, SN95's Mystic Cobras for 96. And what I really like is he um, was testing the 03 Mach 1, the 04 Cobra, and the 40th anniversary GT, they even have a, a video about it. And he was getting the best times out of those cars and driving them. And it's just so cool that he was there during that time. He he tested the Cobra R. He just did so much of that stuff. And these are all my favorite cars. And he was there just doing all that and putting out great numbers and just a real Mustang enthusiast. And I mean, he loves a lot of things. And so it was really cool to meet him. He said, hey, let's take a picture together. I said, sure. I'm like, um, you know, so got a picture with him and uh, I really enjoy his YouTube channel. And so something I just want to make a point of is how nice he was to talk to. And same with my friends with the 40th anniversary GT. Uh, you meet some people and, you know, they're either busy or, you know, maybe they don't know you at all, but you know them because you've been watching them for a long time. But both of these people, this whole group of people, the dad as well, were just so great to talk to and just really awesome car enthusiasts. And I really enjoyed just being able to talk to them 
and uh, just they were they were all very very nice to me so I just want to put that point through it was a great time and so here's a little bit of the lineup of the Optima Battery Series cars. Lots of neat cars. This one lives across the street from me, that GT500. He's my neighbor. It's a cool Challenger here, 70 Challenger with a Hellcat swap in it. And they're out there just really using this car. Man, that looks really cool. I mean, for a race car, that's really awesome to see a 70 out there. Love those taillights and everything. So here's some noise. I think that's the reason why people do not want the electric cars. I mean, that sound of that coyote was deafening and it sounded good and it was fun and it makes your heart race. And I think, you know, that electric cars are neat, but they're just not going to do that. There's just nothing like the sound of a V8. And these fun cars are just an excitement to drive and enjoy and hear. I mean, that's a big part of the experience. So cool, that was a competition orange coyote and here's a, a GT350 that has kind of a GT500 hood, just tons of mods on here. That spoiler was incredible, <laughs> very crazy. And so voodoo on the license plate, 5.2 liter you know, voodoo engine with the flat plane crank. And so lots of nice cars. You could look at every one of these and uh, here's a, a VMP supercharged GT500. I'm going to show the VMP on there. That's really cool. You could just really enjoy each of these cars for so long. I, I feel bad walking past a lot of them and not really giving them all the credit they deserve. Um, there's so much to see. And here's a really neat 70 uh, style and a 69 here with the Rally Sport headlights. I really like that. I think that's cool. See cars like this being raced and used for so long and... Uh, you know, that's really cool. There's the Rally Sport uh, taillights and everything on that one. And this one, just beautiful um, color and everything. Speed Tech Performance right there on the side there in my hometown here. I've been to their shop a lot. As a matter of fact, I'll show you a car in here in a second. There's another 69 Camaro. Beautiful car. And uh, here's another 70s Camaro. That's very nice. And uh, here's the 80s Camaro. So kind of cool to see those being used too for racing. And a uh, 66 Chevelle, like the one my friend's dad has. Now this uh, Cuda with the Hellcat in it is really neat. This is an AAR Cuda. And uh, that was, you know, Trans Am Racing and American uh, Association of Racing, you know, back in the day. And now it has a Hellcat engine in it. What was really cool about this car is I saw it being built. And so I'm going to throw in a little flashback here of what this car used to look like in the shop. So I'm pretty sure that's the same car. It says Speed Tech on the quarter there. That was the shop where it was being built. So really neat. I did not expect to see this car there like that. I assume they race it if it's got the Optima stuff on it. So that's very interesting to see a car like this, you know, out being used and, 
you know, not just a show car, but, uh, you know, a lot of money into this car and a lot of neat things to make it what it is. And then, you know, Hellcat engine and everything, and they're out here enjoying it and using it and driving it. And you can see it spent on magazines and stuff. So really, really cool car. Probably one of the neat um, cars out here in the whole Optima area, you know. So really fun to see that with the Hellcat engine in it. That is got to be a blast to drive and I bet it's really fun so here's a uh, 66 Chevelle and uh, this has a LS engine in it so that's pretty cool to see that you know my friend's dad has a SS 396 like that so I'm familiar with these cars a lot of people don't know what a Chevelle is or you know especially that year the 66 beautiful another Z28 Camaro with the rally hideaway headlights you know just really cool to see that uh, very fun beautiful color so it's got some hood vents on there got a vinyl roof really cool to see old cars like this that are still being used and uh, raced around and stuff so that's really fantastic beautiful color again just really fun to see the nice wheels on it and everything so beautiful uh Looks like a 68 Camaro. I like the stripe around the nose like that that they had. And here's a 70 Chevelle. Looks like an LS engine here. Yeah, LSX. So that was pretty cool. Red interior. So black with red since it's a turbo. So that's pretty neat. I like the LSX badge here on the dashboard. I mean, a lot of these cars have so much into them. And they're just really neat muscle cars. This is just so fun. Love the 70, it's my favorite year of the Chevelle. Here comes a pretty crazy one, looks like it has the Shelby grill on it, Shelby logos and a bunch of other performance parts on it, drift car, so Whipple superchargers on the back. That thing's gotta be a blast, that's really neat. cool Hellcat. I like orange. That looks really good. There's just so many cars here. You'll walk right past them. I thought it was fun to see the Shell and Ferrari stuff together. That's very iconic racing. You know, I was telling my wife how cool it is that Shell's been along and all that. Now this is Jay Leno's Dodge Demon 170. I walked up to the car and said, I bet that's a 170, and sure enough, it was, and I turned around, and it was at the Jay Leno display where he's selling his cleaning products and stuff. So cool to see one of these cars. I watched this exact car on YouTube when they gave it to him, and he went and got inside it and drove it at the Dream Cruise, and I heard there aren't very many people who have received their Demon 170s yet, but a few celebrities have. And this is one of them. So pretty cool to see one in person. I've seen a couple Dodge Demons, but um, this one's uh, really neat to see. You know, you don't see them much, and they've turned into instant collector items. And so pretty cool. Beautiful color. Looks good. You know, I like how the, the matte color reflects so well with the lighting. I think that's really neat. So... Dodge has done a fantastic job with heritage and, you know, performance and stuff. So it's really cool to see. I really like the Dodge Challengers. I think they're really cool. Here's a set of uh, SW lights that has the Cobra Snake in them. That's pretty interesting to see. I was like, wow, that's a new edge light right there. And this is Novsight, and they are the ones who sponsored me by giving me a set of the headlights and fog lights, the LEDs for the Mustang, which are in my silver GT right now. And I do use them every day and I really, really do enjoy them. And I think they're a great product. And so when I went by their booth, they asked if I could stop in for a little bit of uh, interview. And uh, they had a little video there that they took of me. So this is just me getting interviewed. So I thought that was pretty cool. It'll probably be on their social media, maybe YouTube channel. And so that was pretty cool. And so here is a Yanko Camaro. Thought this was pretty cool. Looks like a Whipple supercharger. It was hard to see 
under there, but this thing is all out. I mean, this is a, you know, fully redone engine and everything, and they're claiming a lot of horsepower with this bad boy. And so here's a little bit of this. It's a 427. And it has everything done to it. And I think it said it was like, what was it? 1300 horse 1500 horsepower and so it's funny it said uh, horsepower varies depending on if you use 91 octanes <laughs> yeah that's gonna be a big difference <laughs> so i think it'll be a detuned for 91 but um, pretty cool to see a yanko camaro i really like the old yanko camaros and i think they're very iconic so i just tried to show a little bit of this for whoever's interested in that so really neat and uh like i said pretty sure that's a whipple supercharger on there but love the yanko badges and stuff so that's fun to see uh, stage three is what they call this one so we're looking at the brembo brakes and someone else there i was looking at the horse on there and someone pointed out that it says right here that these are the um dark horse calipers so that's pretty cool beautiful uh corvette here and uh has a Magnuson supercharger on it. So I would assume that's the 2.65 liter uh, rotor pack, what I have in my Cobra. My uh, VMP is actually Magnuson. Well, mine was actually made by Roush, but the Gen 3Rs are Magnuson superchargers, and VMP works with them. So it's kind of a carbon fiber wrap here on the roof. And uh, very well done, very crazy, you know, and black. I mean, black's a show color for sure. So that's a color that's going to stand out. And uh, here's an Eliminator with a 351 in it. So this is a Cougar and uh, a lot of Ford history there. That looked like a really nice car. And uh, they had another kind of Gulf inspired colored car here, Mustang Fastback with a Coyote in it. Very nice blue color with the orange. So that's really cool to see a Coyote and a old Mustang. I'm sure that's a really fun car to drive around. I bet it sounds good, drives good too. You know, nice wheels, like everything on this. Here's a little bit of uh, this if you wanted to read through it. So a lot of stuff done to it, I'm sure. I mean, that, that's quite a build list. <laughs> and uh, this said it was the most modified S197 Mustang in the world. When I looked at it, I noticed that the uh, engine sits really far forward. You can see the transmission there. And uh, this is the 5.8 out of a GT500, but I believe it w wasn't originally a GT500. We have a plaque here we can pause and read too if you want. The seats looked like they were actually Cobra Terminator seats on the bottom half. We'll look at those again here. Uh, but this was really interesting. He had opened up the trunk and there was like nothing there. Like it was all the way to the back of the trunk. And so very interesting. The most highly modified S197 Mustang in the world. 14 GT500 driveline. And then it talks all about everything on it. So very, very interesting. Here's some pictures of them doing all the work to the car. And then again, the seats, they look kind of like Terminator Cobra on the bottom. But anyway, here's a, a Mustang Dyno, and it said uh, emission testing, so I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> but this is a Dyno, so kind of cool to see one out of the ground and where you can actually see a little bit of it. And here's the Dyno Pack hub Dynos that they use where they put them right on the uh, wheels and test the power that way. I kind of like that idea because there's no slipping, there's no tire spin or anything, so pretty cool to see. So then we left and we went to uh, in and out and uh, it's my favorite poster there. And we went to the pick apart, had a little bit of time. There's a GT here. Pretty sad to see. Uh, it looked like a pretty nice car. I don't know why it was really in there, but it was an automatic uh, black interior car. So black leather looks really nice. Airbags still there and everything. They don't let you take the airbags out of this pick apart, but... Um, Pretty cool to see some guy had taken that hood scoop off within minutes after I took this video. So at least the parts are uh, going to be used again. But here's the engine. Somebody had stuffed a couple interior bezels down in there. I wonder if they're hiding them for later or something. But I went ahead and got this uh, brace off of a convertible. That's the reason I wanted to come here mostly. 
So here's the extra bracing that the convertibles have. And they have, uh, you know, the hardware in these different spots here. I'm going to, you know, make another video about all this. This will be going on my zinc yellow GT Mustang to help tie the K-member and body together since the whole front's been done. And I, I needed that and a wheel well liner here. Really sad to see a true blue Mustang in here, just like my bullet. It was a V6, but a true blue 2002 Mustang. But I needed the wheel liner. And so I'm going to put this on my zinc yellow car. So I came out with a bunch of parts. And uh, I just brought my tools with me just in case. And then it was a really nice drive home going through the desert in this beautiful weather. It's just the perfect time of year. Just everything I've been talking about lately on the channel and how nice it is. Just cruising with this GT. It did a fantastic job. I'm very proud of this car, especially after everything that I've done with it. It had, you know, it was totaled when I bought it basically. And I put it back on the road and enjoyed a wonderful drive with it. And it did a fantastic job, averaged about 22 miles to the gallon. And uh, just this is that same gas station where I stopped with the Zinc Yellow GT. And so I just wanted to show the car here a little bit and show a little bit of the trip and how much we enjoyed hanging out and cruising and Usually I go with friends. This time I took my wife and we really enjoyed some time together like a date. And uh, right under that flagpole is where I parked that Zinc Yellow GT when I came back and where, they, where I had the engine for it in my brother's truck, if you saw that story. It's a really good story. So, you know, it's been really fun uh, driving this GT and saying, let's go ahead and make a road trip out of it. So here we are coming back through the gorge and you know I have other videos that show a lot more of this if you're interested so I didn't want to take up too much time this video is already pretty long here but getting back there's that wall again we were looking at <laughs> at the beginning of the video coming back to home sweet home this is my beautiful town I love it here this is where I reside beautiful neighborhood very happy to be home. It's so crazy down there in Vegas. So many people. It really gives you an idea how big the world is and how you're just a little part of it. But this is where I'm happy. This is where I love to be. So back here, I'm going to pull out all these parts I got. I got that brace. I got this wheel liner. You know, I'll just go ahead and uh, put all this stuff out here. There's my coveralls and stuff. Take this wheel liner, might as well put it on the grass where I can wash it and clean it up and stuff. And uh, that'll be another video. I'm really excited about that. So it's kind of fun. I got to go down to the SEMA show and do all that, but I also got to get some parts and things that I really wanted to. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was quite an experience, and it was really nice of Novsite, Novsite to send me down there and get me the passes for me and my wife to go enjoy the show. There's my new brace. I'm really going to clean that up and have fun installing that on the car and stuff. And so, But anyway, yeah, thanks to them for sending me tickets to go see the show. There are a lot of people who love that. I know a lot of people who want to go every year, and uh, you know they're always talking about it, so it's kind of fun to get to go experience it, especially from the inside, from that perspective. So... Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more Mustang content.